Good evening and welcome to Church Online here at Christ Lutheran Church in Mustang, Oklahoma. I'm Pastor Ross and I'm glad you're joining. Let's start with a little intentionality tonight. One of the hardest things to do at home is, is church. And so I invite you to pause the video for a moment and find a candle or maybe you have an advent wreath there in front of you. You, you can use that. But let's light that candle and remember that Christ is the light of the world and we are gathering around uh, the, the, the world right now in that presence, in that light. Let's sing our first song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, 
O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Our reading for this evening comes from 1 John 3, verses 4 through 10. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This Advent season, we have been longing for a cure. Longing for a cure to sin, of which we see in the cross. Longing for a cure from death, of which we see when the tomb is empty. Now we are longing for a cure from the devil. You see, the devil comes along and says, oh, that forgiveness really can't be for you. The devil comes along and says, mm, you really think life everlasting exists? You think God exists? You think that you can live forever in his presence? Look at you. No, you will die and you will stay dead. He does this through attacks, both direct and oblique. In other words, directly attacking or standing before God by saying, yeah, you can't really be forgiven. Or was the tomb really empty? He does it obliquely by tempting us to sin by placing us in the place of God and making everything and everyone want to exist solely to please us. So John writes, he who sins is of 
the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The devil sinned when he tempted Adam and Eve. He sinned when he made war on heaven. He sins when he declares that he should be the one who judges us. In fact, what we often call the devil, Satan. Satan means accuser or the great accuser. That's his role, to be prosecuted. But he wants to be judge, jury, and executioner. And the fact of the matter is, is that by my own power, by your own power, we cannot resist him. We are doomed. He is stronger than us. He is more evil than us. He is more cunning than us. And through either whispers in the ear or direct attacks of demonic oppression, he comes at us time and time again, seeking to drive away the sheep from Christ, to scatter the herd of God. to chip away at our faith little by little by little until it crumbles. And if we were just to take John's passage by itself, boy, who could hope? Because I don't know about you, but I still sin. I'm not perfect. Does that mean that I am of the devil and not of Christ? I've heard these words twisted to mean that. To leave people in utter despair. Because if my standing before God rests on my abilities, I am nothing. My foundation is sand. My works, a filthy garment. And I have no hope. And that's what the devil wants. Time and time again, we see in scriptures, Satan twisting God's word to make them mean something that they don't. Oh, you won't surely die. You'll be like God. God is scared or God is jealous of that. If you're hungry, make bread. Bow down and worship me and I will give you the world. Don't think he doesn't do that with you. you read or hear this passage, he's not trying to twist it in your mind. You know what comes two chapters before this in this same book, inspired by the Holy Spirit, written through the hand of the Apostle John? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is merciful and just and forgives us our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And that is John's point here. When we confess our sins, we are of God. You are a child of God, and Satan cannot take that away from you. He wants you to disbelieve to become his child. He wants you to sin and think you are helpless and hopeless in your sin and your death. And so make you despair and give up faith. 
but you are of Christ and your sins are forgiven in him. Even the sins that you committed today, they are forgiven if you hold on to that faith. And you sit there and think, well, okay, again, that's a work that I do. I have to hold on to that faith, but how do you hold on to faith? Well, the Holy Spirit does it for you. And how do you come to faith? The Holy Spirit works through the words and the sacrament, coming into your heart and working faith, slowly regenerating your will because the old Adam has died. You see, God does the work for you. And so what is righteousness before God? It's not you having to go out and do a thousand billion million works. You don't have to go out and volunteer at the homeless shelter or the food bank. You don't have to lead Sunday school, be a leader of VBS, a famous saint. You don't have to be a church worker. No. What is the righteousness that God is looking for? The faith that he gives you. See, we hear God's word and the Holy Spirit comes and works within us and we realize our sin and we repent. And what is repentance? Simply holding on to the forgiveness in Christ and being contrite for our sins. Of saying, Lord, help me, I am a sinner. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Because Christ has already won the battle against Satan. You are freed from the yoke of slavery to Satan. And you have been made a child of God. We're going to be celebrating Christmas in eight days. Christmas, when Christ came for us. The second person of the Godhead coming down into our flesh. Live our life. And even though he was fully God, to be fully man. To suffer under the temptations of Satan. To be abandoned by those he loved. To be nailed to a cross. To earn the forgiveness of sins. To rise from the grave to proclaim that forgiveness reigns supreme and the darkness has not overcome the light of God. A light has shined in the darkness. It has shone upon you and resides in you in the person of the Holy Spirit. And Christ shall come again and the night will permanently flee. And Satan will be bound and cast into the prison forever. Here's the famous Reformation hymn. A mighty fortress is our God. And Luther talks about how just with our power alone, the devil and his minions too strong for us. But no matter how fierce the devil scowls at us, one little word can fail him. One little word can fail him. Can undo him, can unwork his work. What is it? What 
is that word. What is the word that destroys the devil, that he cannot stand, that makes him flee from you? It is forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven of your sins. And so you have been given life. You are forgiven of your sins. And so you are freed from slavery and made a child of God. You are forgiven. And so Christ has placed you into the Father's hands and nothing can snatch you away from him. The devil will try and try and try and try again. But God is stronger than the devil. The devil has already lost. Scripture says Christ has already proclaimed victory to the captives. Satan is undone. His power is null and void as much as he tries to scare and tempt. The forgiveness of Christ reigns supreme and rolls down like deafening thunder on Satan's accusations. And so Satan sits there and says, but, 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 and God says, he is forgiven. She is forgiven. The pronouncement is made. Satan is powerless. He cannot unmake you, a child of God. He will do his best. He will keep on coming after you until you breathe your last. Or until Christ comes again, whichever happens first. But he's already lost the battle. And so Christ is the cure for our sin. Christ is the cure for death. Christ is the cure for the devil. In his name, amen. i
Let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing our closing song. Yeah.